So, hey everybody, I'm now recording. So, um, today we're going to be talking um, about how to convert interest into business. So, we're going to be doing that in the second half of today. But we're going to start off with some real key things from when it comes to virtual classes. Why it's really a good thing for you to be considering doing it and putting some effort into it. And that it's not wasted effort for today for tomorrow, you know, when, when, when tomorrow comes, right? Tomorrow being the day we reopen. I actually see that this is a really great wake up call for gyms, you know, and maybe wake up call is a pretty rough word to use, but I think it is a wake up call that gyms start thinking about technology and utilizing it because whether or not you're using, utilizing it, um, your target demographic is, and they want it, right? So this is kind of like a little bit of an opportunity for us while we're closed down and not doing the bazillion things that we're doing as operational gym owners. Um, maybe we didn't, instead of doing a bazillion things, we're just doing a million things, but we've got to be able to find some time to actually upskill our ability to do, use some of the technology and some of the options that are out there to, to better our gyms and to actually get up into the game plan of, of what a millennial mum or a generation Z mum is. Now, you know, I've said this before, and we need to start un, you know, really owning this, is most mums are millennials or younger, right? The oldest millennial is 39 now, right? So many of your mums that aren't millennials are starting to have kids that are going to college and they're probably not coming to your gym anymore, right? Now, we, you know, we have a little guy, we're older parents, uh, we're in our 40s and, and Rivers too, so we're gonna be, the, we, we're gonna be the, the antithesis to that rule, but the majority of mums and parents are gonna be 39 and under, and that's only gonna be more and more over the years, right? Next year will be 40, the oldest millennial, the year after 41, and blah, blah, blah. So let's, let's get on the game plan of where they're at. Right now, if you're not doing virtual classes, I think you're missing out on an opportunity, and I really do think that you should be considering doing it. In the course, um, in the Gymnastics Marketing Academy that we are offering, you know, is open for you guys to use, um, and we're not charging a fee for it. There's step-by-step -step process on how to actually build out your own virtual academy, right, or virtual classes. There's other uh, things out there that are paid, for, like uh, My Gym is online. Um, you can pay a couple of hundred bucks a month um, to use them. Um, there's other other things out there as well that you can utilize, right? I, I, I recommend, you know, if you don't have any money, um, that you can still do it, and you can do it through the way that we're teaching it, right? Which is basically using Facebook, um, Facebook your Facebook page, do a Facebook Live, um, and then, or a YouTube, if you if you just want to record them, you can do a YouTube video, and then you can actually embed those videos onto a WordPress site, which is password protected if you want it, where it's, it is actually organized from a from a lesson standpoint. So you might you might have something called you know, um, you know, uh, learn a a living room floor routine. Here's our living room floor routine, right? And the living room floor routine might be made up of a forward roll, a backward roll, you know, a headstand, a blah, 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 blah. And you might have 10, 10 parts to your living room floor routine. The, the actual lesson is the living room floor routine, but you break it up into 10 skills that you're going to teach. You might have 11 because you might have another video that was a two minute video talking about what um, what you're going to do and, and how you're going to do it, right? And and then you do each skill involved with your floor routine um, individually, not a big, huge, long video, right? Um, the reason for that is, and I don't know if you guys know this, and I don't know if I've told you, but for years I worked for a television station as an executive in a television station. I was on the revenue side of things, but 20 minutes on camera is a long time, right? It's a long time, right? It's, it's very, very hard, especially if you're active and like, I'm just sitting here talking to you. Um, but if I'm walking around an area trying to show skills, if, I, if I'm doing it for 20 minutes and I'm trying to teach, you know, even say five skills, there's gonna be a lot of dead space, there's gonna be a lot of dead time, there's gotta be a lot of 
stuff where I'm moving to one skill or pulling a piece of equipment over or doing something which really is not of any use to the person watching. And if there's five different skills that I'm doing in one video and a kid wants to see the third one, they've got to try and find it, right? And it's a pain in the butt. You also, you know, even the best kids out there are going to struggle to go through 20 minutes. Unless you are, your, your name is Lightning McQueen and you're a cartoon race car, you're probably going to struggle keeping kids engaged with you for a long period of time, right? And I guess I'm looking at you all and I don't see Lightning McQueen here. So um, I really do recommend that you keep those videos nice and short and very specific to whatever class or whatever skill that you're trying to do. And there's a couple of reasons for it. One, <clears throat> the negative reasons, and I've, I've got a video that uh, I, I just did talking a little bit more about this. But one of the main reasons from a negative standpoint, it's just hard for you to do it. It's just hard to just, and to constantly come up with 20 minutes of video, right? That's really difficult, right? And, that, and that's not even as long as you normally get. Like many of you, I've had many gyms come to me and say, man, you know, our classes are usually an hour long do I have to do an hour long class? No, no, you don't. Because if you think about it, when you're coaching, you know, an hour long class, you're actually doing lots of individual conversations with lots of kids. And there's lots of waiting times that kids are doing for their turn. And, you know, it's not like a constantly moving thing with video. It needs to be constantly engaging, right? You can't have a, a period where all the kids are just sitting around, like pulling each other's hair and stuff, which they sometimes do you know, in the gym. So, you know, 20 minutes is just really difficult for you. The other thing is that on a positive note is in that 20 minutes class, there might be 10 skills that you teach, right? Or 10, 10 skills that you, you teach and we can like cut them all up and have 10 separate videos. When kids and parents look at the value of what you're doing and they see one video, right? Even if it's 20 minutes, they don't look at the 20 minutes. In fact, the 20 minutes is a pain in the butt as far as I'm concerned. But if they see 10 two minute videos, there's a lot more perceived value there, right? The other thing is, is that if the, if the child is looking at it and they, maybe they do the forward roll, they do a cartwheel, they do the cartwheel video, they do the backward roll video, they do you know, the headstand video, whatever the, they're at, if they, they can progress through each of the videos and then maybe they even go, oh, let's go back. I, I, I forgot what the cartwheel, video was again i forgot what i'm doing with my cartwheel i want to get better at that and they can go back and watch it and it's easier for them to find stuff and they're going to be engaged the last thing you want to have happen is that kids get bored of your 20 minute long videos and then mom's saying why aren't you doing your gymnastics class and that, well, ah, it's boring I'm, I'm not really interested right what happens there is the parents perceived value goes through the floor and they start going, well, why am I even engaging at this point? Why am I paying for this? Why am I, why do I care about this? My kids don't even want to do it. Right. But if you keep the short, sharp little videos, right, they, you'll keep them engaged. There's a reason why Instagram, which is where all the young, the youngies are, right. Instagram keeps it to 15 seconds. Cause quite frankly, no one can keep, you know, no one who is, you know, I'm sorry to say this, Emily and Peter, I think you're, you guys are millennials, but you millennials can't concentrate on anything for more than 15 seconds, right? TikTok is like five seconds or 10 seconds or something, right? Right. There's a reason for that. They didn't do it because they were like, let's like short change everybody. They knew that that's about the attention span that you have, right? So two minutes is actually a really long video for this age group, right? So Stick to that. The other really good benefit of having, say, those 10 videos put together is that you can grab one of them and then promote it into the, into the community and say, hey, here is our forward roll video. It's part of our living room routine program, right? And you can use it as a way to get people to engage with you, right? And maybe you do a living room camp uh, uh, routine. You do a a beam routine, which might be just a, a chalk line on the floor. You might do some different things. I'll leave it up to you guys because you guys probably have a better idea of what you can break it all up into. But again, you can like take one or two videos from, from the 10 and actually share that to the community and start getting the community excited about you, right? Because what I, what I said in the first uh, training three weeks ago 
was what we're trying to do is two things. Keep your lights on right now and then make sure you open to a bang and not a stutter, right? Not a, not a stagger, right? So, and, so go, Andy, yes. do, sorry, do you recommend, I've been speaking with some clients about this, is just having a, like an, an open conversation meeting, Zoom meeting for classes so that the kids have the opportunity to reconnect with their peers and just talk and just chat and just reconnect just to keep them excited about that. And I, I, I think the lives um, could, can be reduced to that right? Like you don't need, it's very hard for a coach. Emily, do you still coach? Right. So I would imagine, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, Emily, to give me your feedback. Um, it's very hard in this kind of situation. Let's say you've got 25 of these little squares with kids doing all sorts of stuff for a coach to actually see what's going on and actually try and correct and make better. Would you, would you agree? Look, your, your, your audio you're not muted. Can you do sign language? I, I can't read it, but maybe someone in the room can, <laughs> can do it. That's okay. All right. So if you can figure out how to get your audio going, Emily, I'd love to get your feedback on it. But my, my experience from being a rugby coach, you know, which is not like gymnastics, but it's, a, it's coaching. It's really difficult to virtually actually one-on-one -on -one correct things and, and do it, especially when you've got a whole bunch of kids with their, you know, trying to do cartwheels and stuff and not looking at everybody at the same time, trying to figure out what's going on, right? So I would suggest, Jessica, that um, it's good to do lives. It's good to do Zoom. It's very important for you guys to understand how Zoom works and lock it down so you don't have some craziness that goes on, so you don't have somebody hijack the meeting with a shared screen of something inappropriate because that's the problem with zoom it's a really good communication tool but you know we, there's already been one instance of um something happening which was kind of shocking um for the kids um when it came to um sharing stuff that they probably shouldn't have been sharing so you know make sure that before you do a zoom call with the kids that you've got it locked down that, that, that the only way something can be done is if you allow it to be done, including chats, right? Because in chats, you can, there's, actually, um, there's actually settings where you can actually make sure that any chat that comes through, you see first before the rest of them see it. And also anybody that wants to share a screen or whatever has to request you to share it and you have to approve it. Don't let it be a free for all because what if there's some, silly kid on there or some bad adult or you know big brother or something that wants to tr thinks he's being funny but actually does something that potentially could be damaging to your gym's reputation so make sure you have that under control but i would suggest that lives um i don't think it's necessary to do a live training of a skill i really don't right because what you want to do is actually show them the progression of this is how to do a skill and then they can watch it over and over again you know youtube videos re rewind rewind go back have a look and the kids do that and they, they're used to that and they do it but rather than a live training because it, that could be a bit of a marsh pit in my my opinion and, and i think it'd be difficult for you to control and then it's it, the replay value is almost zero right um the replay value of a pre-recorded skill set in a multiple multiples of videos with each skill um, into a lesson is really truly valuable right and you can actually categorize okay here's the here's level one floor routine here's level two uh living room floor routine here's level you know also and then they can progress them and maybe you tell people you can't do the level two floor routine until you've got the level one done and you've made a video of it and you sent it to me Right? You can do all sorts of kind of fun things with it. But my biggest thing coming back to it is make it easy on yourself. Make it easy for you to record it because, you know, Emily, Barbara, you know, Agnes, Peter, you probably have somebody in the gym, if not yourself, who can actually do a really good forward roll and show how to do it, right? Who can do a really good cartwheel and show the progression of how to do it. And you just record it, record it, record it. Lots of energy, lots of fun. And just stick to that, and then you you lace them all the, all together on your WordPress site or whatever website that you have where you can embed your 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 videos. And then the marketing part of it, which is what we want to talk about a little bit today, is we can pull stuff 
from those lessons and share into the community to get the community excited about your gym. So when you reopen, you've got a number of people, you've got a lot of people going, hey, I want to be a part of it, right? And that's if you've got it locked down. I know there's some gyms that are like opening up to the whole community and are serving the community and they're getting huge amounts of goodwill and low thousands of people potentially looking at them as an opportunity when they reopen. Now they're, they're looking at the long game rather than the short game. Maybe they're in a better financial situation than others. And then there's other gyms that are actually offering it as say a, a donation, right? So you can have access to all of our classes, regardless of whether or not you're a, uh, a, a member of the gym for a donation. And there's some people that are doing a hybrid of it. They're doing, um, Hey, if you're a member of our gym, we're, we're giving you a discounted rate, but you have full access to all of our virtual training. And if you are a um, somebody who's out in the um, community, you know, we've got a maybe 50% of our classes available to you for a donation, right? So there's lots of things you can do with this technology. And I think when the gym, when your gym reopens, you should continue doing it because it's a wonderful way to reach out to the greater community. And let's say you've got a limitation of how many kids you can have in your gym. Maybe you're hitting the mark. Maybe you've got a thousand kids already and you really need to have 900 kids. And you're like, man, I wish I could serve more kids. This is a way to maybe get in front of more kids and have a constant big, huge waiting line. So if whenever anybody leaves, you're automatically going to have somebody stepping into that spot, right? And you can be serving you know, 30,000 kids, even if you've got an 8,000 square foot gym, right? And I think there's real value to that. And you can, again, you can like maybe even have a, a cheaper, uh, you know, class version. Maybe, maybe if you want to do virtual classes, the, the parent pays $10 a month or $20 a month, right? And the goal is to get 10, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 online gym members at $10 a month that's almost all profit apart from the time of the coach and the videographer who's putting it together, right? That's a heavy profit margin there, which I really would love to see you as gym owners start seeing, right? Many of you do not do this and make a lot of money. Um, but I would love the gyms to be doing well, your, your gyms to be doing well enough to actually turn this into a real career where you can retire really well. And maybe even your coaches and your full timers can actually look at it as a, as a true career, career path and utilizing technology, I think is, is one of the ways for us to get there. One, to make sure that our classes are always full Two, to make sure that our, um, our, uh, you know, our fees are always as high as we can, you know, as the market will bear, which I think is fair. One thing I want you know gym owners to understand is many times as gym owners we, we do it we're, we're very altruistic right there's a there's a I want to help kids I, I feel bad about making money I feel bad about charging a kid too much because I don't want one kid to miss out on gymnastics well that 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 kid that can't really afford to come to live coaching maybe they can do virtual classes right? Until they're ready to do it. And at least they, they can get something out of it. And then when they're ready and they want to do live close cut coach, uh, coaching with a, with a really good coach, then they can pay what they really need to be paying to make sure that you have a viable business, right? Um, because I think, and I think this is, if we do this well, we have a really good opportunity to, to make this um, a bit of a game changer for our industry, right? And, and maybe this is the silver lining on this horrible situation and, and you know, we need to be working at it. And there's lots and lots of ways to make it easy for you. We're actually working with a couple of partners to try and make it easier and easier for you. If you're not part of the gymnastics marketing um, academy, I highly recommend that you do. You can get in there for a donation at the moment, right? And it's lifetime when you get in. And in there right now, we've got 20 something, uh, um, little uh, twin we've got about 70 something classes on different parts of how to market your gym but I think there's about 10 classes on the virtual program and how to set it up and run it and it's step by step and there's new stuff in there so if you're not doing it you're missing out 
So with that, before I move on to the next step, do you guys have any questions about what I'm talking about? Because I think, I think this is really good stuff that can make a big difference to how you guys operate, not just now, but in the future. Yeah, just a question kind of on what you were talking about before um, with the lives. I just wanted to get your guys' opinion. USAG has been putting out a lot of information on avoiding doing live videos just for fear of what could happen or what fear of that perception. So I didn't know what your thoughts were on that. I, I kind of agree with them to a degree. Um, there's already been a couple of things that have happened where, you know, uh, you know, older brothers or somebody have gotten there and actually shared a screen of something that really should not be in front of kids. Um, that's happened. Okay. So a lot of that has to do with Jim's not understanding zoom and not understanding that they can lock it down and are leaving it all open. So it becomes a free for all as a coach. And when you're, when you're dealing with your kids in a coach situation, you're in total control, right? You're making sure that everyone's in line. You're making sure that they're not stepping out, but that, that there's some discipline. And, and when you're coaching, it's not a free for all. The kids aren't just running to all corners of the gym when you're trying to coach them. You actually got some controls. And it's the same when you're doing a live video. You need to have things locked down. You need to have some controls. Um, I'm not 100% certain of the true benefit of a live training. Like, like I was saying, Emily, I don't know if you've got your, your audio going. Is your audio going now? Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> I, I, like I was saying to you, Emily, I'm not sure how easy it is for you as a coach to actually train when you've got like 10 boxes open like this with all different camera angles and kids doing stuff all over the place. I don't know how effective a coach you can be in that situation. Yeah, we um, have actually, we thought about a lot of that stuff. And so um, what we actually do is we have, for instance, we started this with our teen program, so it was a little bit um, easier to kind of talk with them and figure out how to make things work. But um, what we do is we'll have, because we can have more kids on at the same time, so we'll have like our level, like our optional. So it's level six through eight for us right now, but we have two or three of our coaches on at the same time. So really there's one coach who's doing the lesson kind of and being the real coach, and the other one or two are really there for like the monitoring. So for instance, if my, um, I'm pregnant right now, so I don't want to do the demonstration, but my um, partner, she does the demonstrations. And then I'm kind of the coach who's actually like giving the kids feedback or um, kind of monitoring what's going on with the kids. That way, if there is anything weird, like if there's too much background noise, I shut the background noise off or I shut off any of the kids that aren't like paying attention or whatever, if there's, if there were something bad to come on, like I'd be the one who sees it. So it's kind of more like almost in the gym, how we have a floor manager who's out there kind of watching the gym while the coaches are doing their job of coaching. That way they're focused on their coaching. And then we kind of have the manager who's there to kind of oversee everything. We kind of brought that to the live yep. stream. So we have somebody who's kind of watching out for all the other things that can be going on. And then somebody who's actually just there to kind of coach. So we've only really done that with our team program, but we've gotten a lot of really good feedback from the parents who like that a lot better than us just sending them videos right now. It's also a little bit of a different feel because those are our competitive kids and they want more from us right now. Right. But um, we're considering trying to do that with a few of the classes that we've started because we made an online class that people had to sign up for. So it's a, right now we only have about 50 people in it. So we um, split it up between like, these are ninja kids that are going to be doing it. And we're going to try it next week, I think, uh, in that format. And I don't know how it'll go exactly, but with our team kids, we got a lot of really good feedback from it. I would, I would suggest mix it up a little bit of both. I think having pre-recorded videos of skills that the kids can go back to when the, you're not Yeah, there. we're still going to do that as well. Yeah. I think there's real value there. Um, mm -hmm. and, and more so for me, there's, more, uh, there's other things you can do with that, right? The, yeah. the live and this is super well organized, which yours might be. Um, there's, a, there's not a lot you can do with that video once it's done, right? It's kind of like a one and done type thing. Although those kids that are involved with it, they might actually go to it a lot of times. But other kids that weren't there, they might find it a little bit less engaging um, and might be, uh, like, a, like I said, it might be too long um, for a lot of them. And there might be a lot of stuff going on that I'm just not engaged with. So I think mixing it up is really good. Going back to you, Jessica, what you're saying, at the bare minimum of having um, maybe a, a catch up, you know, where everybody can like talk to each other and, and, and chat in a very controlled environment, making sure again that 
people aren't doing things they shouldn't be is a good thing. So, so whilst I'm, I'm definitely pushing the uh, non-live training, I think, Emily, you, it sounds like you've actually got some pretty good controls going on, which is really important. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got maybe a good system that's running. You might find that it works much better for the team kids because they all know each other so much better. They, they kind of, you know, with team kids, I mean, gyms become their second home, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and it means a lot to them. Um, but I think if you were to push that video out to the greater community uh, to try and get people to engage with your gym, which is what I kind of want you guys to be doing um, at some point, um, I don't know if there's going to be a lot of value there. So doing a bit of both, I think is really, really good because you can yeah. use, you can kind of cover all bases, right? Yeah, that's our plan. We really, um, we're trying to do the lives for the specific people who have signed up for these and we are charging for that. It's $10 a month. It's not super expensive, right. but those ones, it's a smaller group of people. So they're kind of getting that little extra. It's only 30 minutes and it's once a week, but then we're doing those recorded ones too and actually having that on the website for yeah. other and I think for you as a business owner, there's a tremendous value in those recorded ones. Make sure there's lots of energy in them. Make sure you mm -hmm. have lots of fun so they can pick up on it. Um, and then what we can do is we can start using those videos and push it out to the community to say, this is what's going on in our gym. Yeah. This is what's going on in your local gym. You can learn this skill, right? Mm -hmm. It can become part of your marketing campaign because I do believe, and the, you know, there's, if you, I don't know if you guys know, but the, the stock market's gone crazy today um, in a good way. It's up you know, 600 points, which I know sounds like, oh, 600 points. Oh, two, tell me when there's 2,000 points movement because there's been that. But 600 points in the positive is a good thing. And a lot of that is because there's starting to be some good noise about what's happening with the virus <laughs> from a treatment standpoint and from a numbers standpoint, even though, you know, we're going through the worst week. The, the talk is that next week we'll start hitting the downslope, right? So if that actually starts happening, I actually think you guys might be looking to reopen sometime in May, um, hopefully sooner than later in May, which means that really right now we need to be thinking about making sure that we are in front of this because of one, like let's say we were opening a gym for the first time. One month lead up marketing would be a short campaign right? To get people excited to make sure that you open up to a bank. So my advice to you is that we actually really get on to this and actually start marketing as soon as possible. So let's say we reopen, let's say they start reopening things mid-May. We need to start thinking about how we're going to get in front of the community kind of now, right? And you might be like, well, I don't know if I'm absolutely going to open in May. Well, there's thing, there's no, it doesn't hurt to make sure that your gym is the top dog in your local area when it comes to kids' activity, right? It's not just gymnastics. You guys aren't just competing against other gymnastics gyms. In fact, I would argue that your fellow gyms in your local area are your brothers and sisters trying to convert baseball and soccer players and, and, and softball players and you know basketball players and all the other options that are out there dance and cheerleading into what you do right maybe you do dance and cheerleading in your gym and and that you know getting those soccer those soccer players coming in getting those basketballers coming in getting all those other sports that kids can potentially do coming in all those kids that don't do sports right they should all know about you in some way, which means if you're, if you're doing your virtual classes and you're putting it together in a really good way, you can at least get that out there. And if you've been following some of the trainings that we doing, we've been doing for as little as $10 a day, you can actually make, get a lot of mums, get, get your message in front of a lot of mums, even just $10 a day, right? If you're doing things correctly. And if you've got some good videos, you've got some good trainings, you've got some good stuff that's happening in the gym, be that place where people get excited about it and go, oh man, I can't wait till this is this lockdown's over. I want to get my kid out of this out of this house because I'm sick of them. And I'm gonna put put them down to the to the gym, right? I'm gonna make sure they get signed up. So when you guys reopen, because there's some thoughts by some experts um, that the average gym is potentially gonna lose 20% of their enrollment right? Just because they just, they, the kids haven't been around for a while and they just don't come back, 
right? I'm hoping that's wrong. Um, it might be more. Um, my, my hope is that, it, that that's not 100% true. But if that is true, and we should be maybe planning as though it is, we want to be making sure that we've got people lining up to take that space. What we don't want is to go through two months of shutdown and then reopen to a lot less kids that are coming back, right? And then going into the summer, right? Because then all of a sudden, this situation that we're being affected by has lasted from March through potentially September, right? Many gyms might not be able to, quite frankly, uh, get through that that kind of period. So we need to make sure that we have a great summer. We need to make sure that we open up with a run instead of a, a, a stagger, right? And that's why I'd, I'd like you guys to be thinking about this stuff. And, and definitely, Emily, if for one reason alone that you made, you know, non-live videos where kids aren't involved, where it's maybe your partner, you know, your business partner doing, you know, doing routines, it would be that. So you can get the word out about, look, look what they're doing at our local gym. Look, you know, I, I want to be a part of that. And you've got to know that there's moms that are like, and there's one right there in Jessica Alexander that cannot wait to get her kids out of the house. She cannot wait. She's like, ah. That is a true statement. I actually just said to my kids, this, it's sunny out right now. Why don't you go and get some fresh air? <laughs> They're like no. swarming in the house. <laughs> right. So, so there's going to be a lot of that. And let's, let's make sure that gymnastics and our gyms take advantage of that pent up demand. Um, but we've got to be in front of them. Like I, I posted a comment. Um, it's, it's probably a well-known marketing comment that um, if your target audience doesn't know you exist, you do not exist, right? It doesn't matter that you know you exist. If your people, if the people that you want to do business with don't know that you exist, you pretty much don't exist. And that's why businesses go out of business because they open up and they're like, people are just going to come. I don't need to do anything about letting them know that I'm available and they don't do anything about it. And there might've been a thousand people that would have loved doing business with them, but because they never reached them and because those people never knew anything about them, they never did business with them. And ultimately that business closed down because their target audience just didn't know that they were around. Right. So with that, I'm going to, let's see if I can find my little thing here. This, I probably should have had to set up if I was actually really, really well organized. Um, but let's see here. Let's type in here. Um, here we go. Here we go. So I'm going to show you this little, um, this little thing. I'll share my screen. Now it won't be anything inappropriate. It's going to be totally fine. So here we go here. So tell me if you see this. Do you guys see a little a little guy with his thumb up? Right. So this is this is normally what we talk about in our fourth in our fourth training is converting interest into gymnasts. So we will be reopen again, and I want you guys to be you know, thinking about how you guys operate. Uh, many times our front desks are operating like uh, they are just there just to just to talk to people, and they're not actually salespeople. The reality is our front desk is our revenue driving part of our business. And every business should have a revenue driving quotient to it or part to it, right? So there is, a, you know, in, in real terms, there is two parts to any successful business. There's service and products. So the quality of the service and the quality of the products. And then there is the sales and the marketing, right? If you only have one side of the two, two slices of the pie, you're actually not going to have a, a, a super effective business, right? Now, there are some examples of businesses that have done really well having one side of the pie as far as I'm concerned. But you know what side it never is? It's never having a great product and service with no sales and marketing. And I know it might sound kind of like self-serving because we're a marketing agency, but the only companies I can think of that have had tremendous success that have a eh, product and uh, eh, okay service are companies like McDonald's. No one's going to say that McDonald's has the best product and the best burger out there. I think everyone would say that they sell and they market their, their, their product really well. And that's really probably the only reason why they do really well is they were really good at marketing themselves. 
Um, the product is very standard and it's very consistent. I, I think the best thing you can say about a Big Mac is that you know that if you go into a McDonald's, you know that what that Big Mac's gonna taste like. Regardless of whether or not you like it, you know it's gonna be the same pretty much wherever you go, right? It's not the best burger on the planet, but it's really good. It's, it's really good from a consistency But it standpoint. does hit the spot sometimes. Too. Yeah, but you know what? It <laughs> really hits another spot usually 20 minutes later, right? And that's, we won't go into that. That's probably inappropriate. So, so you know, a really well-run business has good sales, good marketing, side one, and good products and services. Quite frankly, in the gymnastics industry, I think that you guys typically nail the products and services side, and you usually are very, very lacking on the sales and marketing side, right? So basically, you know, your target, you, you might have 20,000 people in your local area that might want to do business with you, only you know, 19, you know, only 500 of them know about you and that's why you have 500 kids in your gym, right? When you could have maybe had 1,500 kids in your gym um, if you actually got in front of all of those 19,000 people. So that's the marketing side that we've spoken about in the other three classes. Um, the sales side is what we're going to talk about today. Now, it's not real sales. Um, it's not hardcore sales. It's not like, you know, you trying to you know, tally market and all that kind of stuff. No, it's about making sure that the opportunity that you have that presents itself is taken care of to the its greatest potential, right? So let's go through this real quick. I'm not going to go through too much of this introduction. You guys know this is me. Um, you know, this is what we've been doing. We've actually got uh, nearly 2,000 gyms in the gymnastics marketing group now. Um, we've got more than 60 gyms that uh, are on our books, but most of them aren't paying right now for obvious reasons. Um, we, we're we going to cover um, you know, who it is that we are contacting and why we want to talk to them in a certain way. We want to talk about a five-day follow-up process that I think is pretty standard in every other business in the world that actually does well. We want to talk about why texting, phoning, and emailing is really, really important. And we're going to talk about why you lose when you try to sell it over text, email, and phone, right? So first up, who is the number one person? I want one person in here to tell me. Who is the number one person you will likely engage with when you're trying to sell your services? Come on. Are we talking about like the mom? Yes. Like, okay. <laughs> I was getting really concerned about you guys not knowing who your customers are, but uh, it's a trick question. <laughs> good, good job, Emily. There's no trick questions. This is all very, very standard. So there's no trick questions. So who who we're typically engaging with is mums, and what are some of the things that we know about mums? Right. Basically, that they are busy. That's probably the number one thing. I'm guessing many of you are mums. I know Emily. If you're not already a mum, you're soon to be a mum. And mums are busy. School pickups, drop-offs, grocery store, store visits, you know, doctors appointments, dental appointments, tutors, sports practices, family events, organizing everything, right? And that's if they don't have a job, right? In fact, you would probably argue that mums that don't have a paid employment type job are crazy, crazy busy. And really, when they get a paid job, um, they actually got two jobs pretty hardcore jobs, full-time jobs, right? Most moms, you know, my wife doesn't have a job, um, but she pretty much gets up at like 6 a.m., goes, 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 8 p.m., little guy goes to bed, and she's like, Ugh. and she falls asleep after about, you know, a couple of hours, and then the day starts again, and that's seven days a week, although I do step up on the weekends because, you know, we have dad's day on Saturday, and then on Sundays, she gets to sleep in. But the rest of the time, it's, it's go, 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 right? So they're really busy. And we need to understand that. And many gyms don't. It's really weird. Many gyms have mums who run the front desk, but they behave like they have no clue what is going on with the, with the main audience that they're talking to, right? Um, many mums, in fact, I, I think all of you, in fact, I would, I would categorize uh, Peter and myself is the same here. We don't give our cell phone numbers for fun. So if you if, if somebody reaches out to you and says, here's my email address, here's my phone number, 
you need to look at this as, wow, she's really serious about contacting. Because think about the way you guys operate. How often do you give your cell phone number out and hope someone won't call you? Right? You're probably not giving the, that contact information out. So when a mom, especially a mom who's really busy, probably a little bit protective of your safety, gives out her contact information to you, that's tantamount to, I want to do business with you. Please, please help me do business with you. The only number that's more of a commitment is your credit card number, quite frankly, as far as I'm concerned. They want you to follow up with them because they're busy. The first time you follow up with them, and this is another thing that gyms do all the time, they give them a call on the phone and then that's it. And then they just wait for the mum to call back, right? That's probably not going to work. And we'll talk a little bit about that. And you guys will probably go, oh, yeah, I can see how that doesn't work. But if that's how you follow up with interest, you are killing yourself, right? Because here's one reason for it. That mom, when you call, might be checking out at Costco, might be changing a diaper, might be doing, you know, at a, at a, at a sporting event. Her, 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 her phone might be at the bottom of her bag and her bag might be in the back of her car. There's lots of reasons why reaching out once and done or even two and done is not going to cut it. It's just not going to work. Right. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. They want you to follow up because they've given you their cell phone number. They want their kid to be involved with your awesome organization. Always remember you're doing them a follow a, a favor by following up. You're not pestering. You're not being a pain in the butt. You've got to understand that. Right. So five day follow up process. How does that look? So on the first day, you're going to text them. If you don't have a text uh, service, you should get one. And that doesn't mean texting them on, uh, on uh, Jackrabbit or iClass Pro. Jackrabbit and iClass Pro have broadcast texting, which means they can't text you back, right? You can send out a text to everybody in, who, who, who you have the phone number of in your gym, but all those people can't text you back. You're not going to hear what they have to say. So you need, to have, you need to set up a text messaging service, and I'll t tell you about who we recommend in a minute, but have a text messaging service so you can set it up where it's actually on here, where you can actually see, um, where it's actually on your browser, where you can actually see um, the text coming back and forwards, and it works like uh, you know, regular texting, um, but it's on a browser situation, and you can actually even have the browser on your phone, and that means even when you're at home, and the gym is closed, you can still be communicating with parents through text. And remember who we're talking to? Can someone tell me who is the typical mum? How old are they? What are they? Millennials, right? Millennials like to text. They don't want to talk to you. They want to text. They want to DM. They want a message. They don't want to talk. So texting is important. We want to call them because that's important. And we want to email them because that's important. And we probably have all those ways to communicate. That first day, don't expect a response. They're not going to respond. There's a good likelihood that 95% of them will not respond to you because they're changing diapers. They're at Costco. They're doing all the different things that are happening. But more so, people don't answer numbers they don't know. Right? So I call Agnes, and it's this weird 219 area code and she's like what who's that that's got to be someone trying to scam me i'm not going to answer that right no one answers a number they've never seen before i i never do i'm sorry guys i might want to talk to every one of you at length if i don't know your number when you call me i'm probably not going to answer i'm going to let it go to voicemail and i'll check it later quite frankly i'm probably going to wait till you leave the third voicemail because i'm that kind of guy right many people are going to wait um, and, and they are not going to answer that. So if you call once, even if you leave a voicemail, you're probably never going to hear from them again. If you're going to sit around and wait for them to come back because they don't know what your number is. And we're all conditioned to think, Oh, who's that? Well, I'm not going to answer that. I don't know if any of you are excited to answer phone numbers you've never seen before. Right. If you are, put your hand up. I'd like to, <laughs> like to have a chat with you. I always screen my calls. <laughs> right. I screen, I screen calls of people I know. So let <laughs> alone people I don't know. So over five days, uh, you want to build up that inter internal pressure on the mum to answer. Now, that's not like a negative, like high pressure sales type pressure. It's just, hey, this number keeps calling. 
-hmm. they keep leaving a message they keep texting let me actually look into this maybe i should look into oh it's the gym and what ends up happening is there might be 25 things that a mum needs to do every day and she might never get down past 10 because she's busy right we want to get up that priority list we want to get up into the far into the five range right mm -hmm. the only way we do that is by constantly calling and reminding her hey look you did reach out to us we're trying to get little jesse into kinder gym um we'd love to set you up with a free trial class let's let's get this done and that's going to get you way better results and i'm talking of orders of magnitude results better right mm -hmm. and i would suggest that even if you guys are not running well-run marketing campaigns which you should all start be thinking about doing and we, we taught you how to do it and we've got, given you tons and tons of things to look into to actually learn it if you're not running a well-run marketing campaign you probably are getting enough inquiries that if you do this process you'll actually get better results right significantly better results you might add five or six new kids a month because you do you change the way that you operate just from a following up with interest standpoint Right. And, and I have an example of just a referral, a doctor's referral that I got a phone call, I got a text, I got an email saying that I have this referral waiting. And that obviously is very important because I've requested this referral, I need this referral, but I just have a million other things I'm doing. So that first day I completely even forgot about the contact they made. And it wasn't until like day three that I, that they said that it was about to expire that I was like, okay, I need to get on this. I need to make this a priority. And it's just that follow up because I'm so, I was so busy. I am so busy that just having that reminder, it's actually doing me a favor. Yeah. Um, and, and in fact, I think we're so conditioned to businesses trying to help us connect with them now that many people would see it that you are disinterested in them as a potential customer if you don't follow up. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. If, if you showed, if you reached out to a business and said, I want to do business with you, and you felt like they never called, never contacted you, but maybe they actually did on a phone number that you didn't realize and they didn't bother leaving a message, which is what a lot of gyms do. They call once and just, maybe they do leave a message and then they just wait. That mom who doesn't think you've called is going to be thinking, oh man, that gym doesn't even seem to be interested in me because you only called once. You didn't text, you didn't email. You might have emailed, but it got lost in the 20 other emails that they get every day. And also if, so, if a parent or a mom, you know, when I'm looking to sign my child up for a particular sport like gymnastics, I'm going to be calling around and talking and trying to find the best fit. Right. So you just want to make sure that you're out in front of that mom in front of them and making them, you know, being that voice and that connection that they make so that they choose your gym and they, and you have the opportunity to speak with them about why, why your gym is so much better than all the other ones. And just so if you're wondering who Jessica Alexander is, she is our director of client services. So she's talking to all of our customers constantly. So mm -hmm. she actually knows more about this than probably I do, if I'm honest. <laughs> so um, we want to contact the, them on five consecutive days, not five days over three months. We want to contact them on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, or if you're open on a Saturday, throw in a Saturday, right? We want to contact them consecutive days. Makes it way more likely that they'll remember that you're trying to call them, much more likely that they'll contact you. If you take longer than that, as Jessica just mentioned, they might be speaking to, they might have reached out to three gyms, two soccer teams, and a swim school, and a blah, 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 because they're just wanting to get their kid into something. And the, the gym that fills them with the most confidence or the organization that fills them with the most confidence that their kid is going to be well taken care of by a professional organization will ultimately, and probably the first one who really engages with them, will get the business, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you don't contact consecutive days and get pretty disciplined about it, you'll probably find that many people say, ah, oh, it's all right, I'm, I've, I've changed my mind. They haven't changed their mind. They actually just signed their kid up to something else. You missed out. Right. Most will engage with you by four, within four days. Right. So most of them will engage with you for four days. So you don't need you. You many times you'll find that the second day or the third day is and the fourth day is the sweet spot. Usually, don't expect anybody to to contact to to respond to you in the first day. Although some people might, and most will actually have engaged and possibly be doing business with you or at least coming in by the fifth day. Right. After the fifth day, drop the drop their information into a 
into it to, if you've got their email information into a newsletter or whatever so you can reach out to them. Make sure that newsletter is not an internal newsletter talking about things that somebody's already signed up would want to hear about. Make sure that newsletter is something that's exciting for people that aren't part of the gym, showing what cool things are happening every day, right? Get them excited about re-engaging with you. Make sure you let the parents know, hey, uh, when you're reaching out to them, hey, hey, if you're no longer interested, just let us know and we'll take you off our list or hey, we'll, we'll stop calling you. Um, we just wanna know, we just wanna help you, right? And make sure you put that message in the second day, um, second, third, fourth day responses um, and make sure you know at the end of your calls, your texts and your, your emails, just so they know that there's not a lot of pressure going on, but also you're reminding them that, hey, you know, you reached out to us. Uh, we, we don't want to be a bother. We just want to help you, right? So why we want to text, phone, and email. 80, we did a study this time last year um, with, we probably sent out, we probably generated, fat, like, I don't know, about 5,000 uh, leads and inquiries for our gyms that we work with. And we put in the question, how do you want to be reached? Text, phone, or email? 84% of them, said, I want to be texted, right? So if you're not texting, you're missing out. If you're not texting people, you're missing out. That number is way higher with millennials, right? So even higher for mums under 35. So if you aren't texting and, and communicating with not only the mums that might want to do business with you, but the mums that are already doing business with you, you're probably not hitting them in the way that they want to be spoken to, right? So you need to be thinking about you know, making sure you're doing that and making sure that that's part of the way that you operate. People communicate in different ways. Some people would rather have a phone call. Some people would rather get an email. You know, the stats suggest that 16% of them want that. But if you get 100 inquiries a week, sorry, sorry, 100 inquiries a month, um, and 16% of them want to be called and, e and, and emailed, that's 16 a month. That's, you know, what, 180 a year. That's a significant amount of people that potentially could do business with you. That's why you still want to be text to emailing and phone calling and not just texting. Because the, the, the risk is, is that you look at the text and go, 84%, I'm just going to text. No, there's, there's still benefits to the calls and the, and the emails. Contacting variety mediums really does increase the chance of response. So even though the mum would rather be texting you, if she gets a phone call from you and an email and sees those, there's more chance that she's going to reply to your text because she's going to be like, oh yeah, that's the gym. They, they keep trying to reach out to me. We actually saw this in action where we had a couple of gyms who just dropped doing emails and, and phone calls and they just did the text texting and their response rate to drop. And when they went mm -hmm. back to doing the phone calls and emails, their response rate went back up again, right? So it does work together. Each has its own benefits. Email, you can put lots of different, lots of information in. I would not do that. I would not put a whole bunch of graphics and a whole bunch of stuff. I'd just keep it pretty simple. But you can put a lot, a lot of stuff into an email. Um, phone calls, obviously, if you can actually get them on the phone, um, it's actually, a, you can have a conversation. A lot of the nuance isn't lost. With text, it cuts right through. It's hard to ignore. Um, the downside is that nuance can be lost and it can, you know, people can get the wrong end you know, misunderstand things, but typically it's hard to ignore a text. So that's why text is good. We recommend salesmessage.com. So it's sales message, S A L E S. Don't forget the S. If you put, if you don't put S in there, you'll actually get some weird Chinese website. So go salesmessage.com. And it is a weird Chinese. I know it's Chinese. Um, I've actually looked at it. So it's a, it's salesmessage.com. That is a text messaging service that is great. I think you can, it's like $30 a month. Um, mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you'll be able to have a text messaging service, which is browser based and app based on your phones. All of your front desk can have access to it wherever they are. Um, you can leave it up on your front desk and then, you know, different shifts can come and go and it's all there. They can see the conversation threads that's been happening with the mum. So you guys can work together to actually stay in communication. Sales message is a really good system. You can actually do um, canned responses as well, mm -hmm. right? So you can quickly fire off responses. 
Um, there's a lot of really good uh, methods with that. Is there anything that you wanted to add about sales message, uh, Jessica? No, I, I really enjoy sales message. I think that the clients who have chosen to use it and use it are able to book um, trials very easily. Um, it's very easy to switch, like Andy said, from front desk person to front desk person, the owner can have it on their phone. So that way you don't have to carry the cell phone around with you. It's just very user friendly. Their support is really good. And there's a lot of cool little features that make texting, you know, reminder, like you said, canned messages, reminder messages, what's your, you know, uh, little things like that, that you can just copy and pay or just select the canned message and fire off. So I, I, I really like sales message. I actually use it to reach out to the clients via yeah. text. I need to text them. And if, and if you have a hardwired landline, you can actually use that same number as your mm -hmm. sales message text, which is really cool, right? So if you've got AT&T landline or Bell South or, or Edison, ComEd, Edison, I think, is it Edison in the Midwest? Um, you can actually, um, with a hardwired line into the, into the gym, you can actually use this, that number as your sales message number. You can't use internet numbers, unfortunately. At least at the moment, but I, I highly recommend that you do that, um, and that's the you know highly effective. So why you lose when you try to sell over the phone? So we're going to like wrap this up here with a little bit of a conversation about this. So a confused mind does not buy, and quite frankly, half the time I think as gym owners we confuse the hell out of mums that have no idea what we're what what to experience and. Um, we must make it really easy because remember there's diaper changing going on, there's Costco runs going on, there's, there's pickups at school practices and all sorts of things going on. Any confusion leads to, I will do that later, which leads to, I never do business with you, mm -hmm. right? You want to make it really easy. You want to hold her hand right through the whole process and help her get in. So do not fill her mind with a whole bunch of thoughts and decisions and the things that are just irrelevant to what you're trying to do, which is basically just get their, their child signed up, which is really all they care about, right? Some of them might be price conscious. They might ask for prices. Just tell them what the price is. Don't give a price list. Don't mm -hmm. send them to a website, right? Don't, don't say, hey, here's, here's a PDF of all our classes going on. You know, I've looked at gym you know, class schedules. I've looked at gym price lists and there's things like tiny twist stars at 7 p.m. on Sundays that, you know, you know, super loopers. You can join the super <laughs> looper class and the, the hyper jumpers and the, the, the shiny star smiles and all of this kind of stuff. It's like, what, what is this? I just want to get my kid into kinder gym. Right. And those are all different names that I've seen for kinder gym classes. That's, you know, don't send out what you've got um, to get and let them figure it out, including, unfortunately, because I, I really do love Jackrabbit and, and iClass Pro, including sending them to iClass Pro and Jackrabbit, mm -hmm. navigate that when they've never seen it before. Yeah, it's right? very overwhelming. And that, to see, sorry to interrupt, to see sorry. Jackrabbit and iClass to someone who's never seen it before. Um, and like Andy said, it's, I've been in the client's sales message and, and help them for formulate responses that get better results. And, um, you know, sometimes they're just throwing so much information on them where it's really, Oh, your child's three, we have this, or we have this, which one's better for you. Just that simple, yeah. make it very, very easy and easy for them to respond and where they don't have to do much thinking. Okay. Wednesday's better. Okay. we got you scheduled in just very easy. Always remember the, the, the mom that has a five-year-old and a two-year-old and maybe a newborn, right? Right. The newborn's on her hip as she's texting you. Five-year-old is, is, running, chasing the three-year-old with a baseball bat and the, the three-year-old's running around with a glass of milk, right? And the mom's going, what? So tiny twist stars on Sunday? Oh, no, oh, let, let me get back to you on that. And again, as soon as, it, as soon as that happens, you've lost them, right? So what we want to do is what Jessica said. You want to just give them the assumption it's, it's, a, it's a very salesy type uh, term, but you, you guys really should be using it. The assumption close, which is basically, do you want to do A or B? So basically, a mum comes in, you know, and, I'll, and I'll use our marketing campaigns as an example. With our marketing campaigns, our gyms know what kind of class the mum is interested in. So it will come in, 
through the, say, the Kinder Gym channel, we know that it's Kinder Gym, um, and the question usually is, how old is your child, right? And then, then that starts it off, and it starts the mum saying, oh, my little Jesse is five. Okay, so little, little Jesse, let's say four, make it easier. Little Jesse is four. We have Kinder Gyms on Tuesdays and Fridays at um, three o'clock. What day works best for you? And that's it. You might have Kinder Gym every day of the week. You might have three, three different times every week. You still just choose two classes and you give them those options, right? And I suggest that you choose the two classes that you want to fill first. So you're controlling it so you don't have, if you've got 20 classes, you don't have 20 kids in 20 classes and they're the only kid in each class. Fill up a class. You focus on two classes. Get them filled. Um, that helps the gym. But more importantly for the mom, they just have two choices to make. And while they've got the baby on the hip and the handheld and the five-year-old chasing the three-year-old with a baseball bat, they're much more easy to go, you know what, Friday works better. And they just go for it, right? If you give them three options, it starts to be something they've got to think about. If you give them four options, they definitely need to think about it, right? If you give them one option, it becomes a big deal. Oh, Fridays, well, let me check with my husband. Let me make sure that it's okay. The funny psychology of this is that giving them, hey, we've got Kinder Gym on Wednesdays at, at four o'clock and Saturdays at 10 in the morning, what works best for you? Well, you'll get much better results. What typically happens, the reason for it is the 50-50 people, which is the majority of people that you ever talk to, will typically go with you. Will typically go, okay, let's just do Saturday. If you give them three choices or you give them one choice, they'll go, let me think about it. And that's just the psychology of how people work, right? The only goal is to get them into your gym. Do not send them to iClass Pro to sign up and sign a waiver before they get there. You know, if you have to get a get a setup in the gym where you might have a cheap computer where they can sign up and do the waiver there where you can help them. Because what Jessica said is absolutely true. We have seen gyms change their whole situation by having the the the, the parents come in and doing those waivers in the gym rather you know and changing from trying to get them to do it all before they come in. Because no one's sitting there to sh to to help them. Right. Or have an iPad in the gym. Yeah. An, an iPad in the gym that they can log in and yeah. do it. And then if they need assistance there, you're right there to, right to there. just guide them through because it's well, just, yeah. The last thing you want to have happen is again, the mom with the three kids with all the craziness going on is for her to go, I don't understand this. You know what? I'll, I'll just get back to this. And that, that, that moment of I'll just get back to this, even though she probably means it is where you'll lose the majority of, of the opportunity. Right? So you just want to say, okay, great. I've got you in on Saturday at 10 a.m. for the kinder gym class for little Jesse. We'll see you then. And then when they come in, they sign the waiver, they do their stuff, and that's their first class done and dusted, and they're out and they're doing it. And they're doing the class, and they come into your gym. Once they're in the gym, you guys have a track history of closing. You guys are closers when it comes to people actually come in your gym. Typically, things work really, really well. Assume the sale at every moment, which is what I was talking about, given the A and B option. Um, and this includes the, the, the gym, uh, the gym coach, right? So that the child comes in, they do a trial class or whatever, whatever they've done, whatever you guys are doing. And that, that, that coach must walk that child back to the front desk and not say, okay, I hope you had a good time and let them walk off. Oftentimes what we're seeing is mums and kids just walk straight out the door and don't ever go back to the front desk. Make sure that coach walks them back and says, hey, look, you know, little Jesse had a really good time. You know, here's Agnes. You know, Agnes is going to help you sign up. And then Agnes, you, you, walk, you walk them through you know, signing up. Don't let there be a disconnect between the coach and the front desk because we found that you know forty to fifty percent of parents just walk out the door not because they weren't interested but because they're, they're looking at their watch and they've got to pick up the big brother from soccer practice and they mm -hmm. just they, they I'll, I'll come back I'll get onto this and again the I'll come back thing loses you guys business and the way I look at it is the average kid is worth <clears throat> about nine hundred dollars to a gym lifetime. Right, so if you think about the average gym in the United States is about seventy-five dollars a month, right? That's the average rec kid is worth about seventy-five dollars, sometimes more, sometimes less, but about seventy-five is the average. 
the average length of life length of stay is about 12 to 18 months, right? Some could stay for 15 years, some could stay for two months, right? The average length of stay is 12 to 18 months. So if we just go on the 12 month, which I think is the more conservative um, you know, period, 12 times 75 is about 900 bucks, right? It's about you know, 850 bucks. So it's actually, no, it's not 900 bucks. So um, $900, if there was $900 walking around in the gym, just blowing around on the floor, I'm sure you'd all run out there and pick it all up and put it in the cash register. That's basically what those kids are. It, with your doors closed right now, I think it's a really good opportunity to, to think about that process that a new uh, trial student experiences from the moment they walk in to the full class till what happens till they exit after the class and think about where there's opportunities for you to tighten up and to improve. And that might mean that you need to make some changes and then notify your coaches of this is, but when we reopen, this is the new policy. I think this is a really good time to put some thought into that and make sure that that experience is like, is an A plus experience for that yeah. mom and child, but the mom too, because if they're, if they feel their child's not comfortable or it, it isn't having a good time, then they're not going to feel comfortable leaving their child or enrolling their child. And so I think it's just really important that that's a, it's a really seamless experience for them. It's really important for you to have an intentional approach to running your business instead of a haphazard, let's just see what happens kind of approach. Right. I bet you there's times when you as business owners, like when you're at the front desk, many of you are kind of coaches. I know, uh, Peter, you're kind of like more of on the business end, so you probably have a little bit more attachment, you know, a little bit more involved with this. But some uh, gym owners are, are team coaches or whatever. But the funny thing is, oftentimes the business owner, when they get in front of somebody, they that person comes in, they sign up. When suddenly there's other staff members involved, sometimes it becomes a little bit less certain that somebody signs up. And a lot of that is because you have no system and the person's winging it. And you're hoping that they sign them up and you're wondering why, why is it that every time I talk to a, a mum that they sign up, but when they talk to some of my staff, nothing happens because you have no process or system and the, the staff is winging it, doing the best they can. And they're just figuring it out as they go along. And that's no way to run a business. No well run business operates that way. And it's really important that your staff, you communicate to your staff that this is the policy and this is what needs to happen. And that they're not just, each one's not just doing what they want, right. that they're following, following your policy. And, and I would even say, invest in your front desk, make sure you've got, I personally now, you know, after owning a gym for 12 years, we used to spend so much money on putting really good coaches out there. And we would, uh, and the, the front desk person was oftentimes a mom that a team mom that just wanted to get a discount on the team tuition. And she was there and it was basically just a placeholder situation. The reality is my most expensive person should have been at the front desk right? The person who was a really good customer service person, who was a problem solver, who could sell our product. And it would have probably added tens of thousands of dollars a year to my business, which would allowed me to pay more for coaches anyway, right? So finally, be consistent, be kind and be helpful. Mums are stressed out. They're being pulled from pillar to post. They've got lots of stuff going on. Be that little oasis of happiness where they can bring their little, little one enjoy seeing them grow and become all they can be, which is what you guys are in the business of and be and feel that they're part of something a little bit special. That's how you get them to stay for three, four five years instead of like 18 months. So, so that's basically my little presentation on that. I really, 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 really do believe that as a gym industry, we consistently are underperforming in that area. Right? And it comes back to the sales and marketing. We put so much money and effort into the coaching and service side of things. We, we, mm -hmm. we, we, we don't think twice about spending you know, $5,000 on equipment if it needs to be replaced. We don't think twice about hiring that really good co coach at $30 an hour, right? If, they, if they're available. But why is it that we skimp and save and shortchange our front desk and our marketing, right? Any business that does well, does a really good job of the sales and marketing 
and then they offer a really quality product. If you guys are wondering why some gyms have 8,000 square feet, 1,000 kids going to it every day and make $1.5 million, that's why. Because they're doing both sides of the puzzle. They're not doing one side of the puzzle, right? I don't know of many businesses that have been very successful that just do great product and service, right? Like I said, McDonald's is a good example of somebody that does great sales and marketing and meh, product and service. But I, I literally have thought about this and I can't think of any major brand that's successful that all they do is great product and service and they don't do a good job at the sales and marketing part of it, right? One thing I both. wanted to... Oops, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, we can do both. Um, and it doesn't need to be a lot of, ex a lot of expense. Mm -hmm. Don't be thinking you've got to be spending where, while you might spend $25,000 on a new floor, right? While you might spend $5,000 on a new trampoline, while you might get new, um, uh, you know, pit foam and it might cost you, you know, six or $7,000 to, to take all the pit foam out, put new pit foam in. And you don't really think twice about it because it's a necessity. I really challenge you guys to be thinking about your marketing and front desk and sales as much of a necessity as that. If you're, if your beam or your bars broke, you would go and buy a new bar, right? You would, if, if you would go and get new bars or you'd get a new beam, right? You wouldn't go, Oh, I'll just leave it be broken. And we'll work with it. <laughs> you would actually get it out and put a new one on because it potentially could hurt it and harm a child, right? Well, not having good marketing, not having good um, customer service and good front desk would mean that there's children that could use you and do business with you that never know that you exist and never come in and never do business. And it could be in the orders of magnitude. And I'll give you one example. We have one gym that we work with. It's the gym that we've worked with the longest. I tell the story a lot when we first started working with them. They had 500 kids and they were making about 500,000 a year. And they had done that for 10 years and it had kind of been the same. And they were like always struggling to get better. And there was a big gym just down the road that they were always com competing against and they really were struggling. We started working with them and I would love to say that it was all us, but we are just part of their puzzle, right? But through working with them, they had a bit of a methodology change and they really started to put a lot of effort on the customer service side of things and the experience side of things and the marketing side of things. Fast forward three years, they're now at a thousand kids. They really only want 900. They keep raising their prices. Their, rec, their average rec price is $130 a month now from 70. The only reason they're at 130 now is because they want to have 900 kids. So they keep raising the price to hopefully 100 kids leave. They leave, but their marketing's so good that they fill up again, right? I keep telling her, why, do you just, why don't you just don't fill it up? And she's like, well, you know, can you turn, would you turn down $13,000 of revenue, right? 100 times 130 bucks is $13,000 of revenue, right? So, um, they're now at a point that they're probably going to hit 1.6 million right now. And they're getting into really good profit margins. They've got career opportunities in their gym where their senior management have careers, right? As owners, they're now doing things. So they're working less time because they have really good general managers and senior management operating their business because they have the resources to do it. It's taken them a while, but they've got to a point that profit is coming through and it's made a major difference to their, their gym and, and their family. And ultimately, in their, in their husband's minds, their gym's gone from this hub, hobby thing that, they, that their wife does to actually the main income for their family that's eclipsing the husband's income. And they didn't do anything special apart from they just upped their game in all aspects of what they did, which was their marketing, their sales, they, they've actually been able to get better coaches because they've actually been able to pay more, right? They've been able to do a lot of good things and it can really, really happen. And every gymnast can happen too, even in a small market to, a, to different degrees. And it's not all about making millions of dollars. It's not all about having a thousand kids at 130 bucks. It's about whether or not you've got 200 kids or 2000 kids that you're actually maximizing that opportunity 
and then you actually have a, a, a you know you're not just giving away your time for the rest of your life you're actually building something for yourself which is rewarding both financially and spiritually which i know gymnastics does reward you guys with that so with that um any questions let's let's quickly like chat about some stuff i know we're about a, an hour and 20 minutes into this which is a bit longer but do you guys have any questions on, on what I've said? Is there anything that you don't agree with? Is there anything that I'm saying that seems crazy? Oh, I'm getting the, I'm getting the looks of, hmm. I, I, I see minds cranking over a little bit. But do you have any questions? Is there any, let me ask you this. Do any of you listen to what I'm saying and go, man, this is going to be really hard to implement? Any of you? Or is it pretty, does it seem pretty common sense? There's a bit of, it's just a bit of a process that maybe I think we're going to have, I think we're going to have a process when it comes to registration, because right now what we require people to do is register before they come into the gym. <coughs> right. Now I know that that's for us, it's a safety issue. It's an insurance issue with gymnastics Ontario. And if we take that information and for like, I mean, for the longest time, as long as I've been there for 10 years, um, there's no such thing as registration over the phone. Well, you don't need so to do registration moms... over the phone. I would, I would suggest Agnes that if you're going to do a process change with that, that you have an iPad in the gym and the mom, when she comes in, she does we it do. in there. Yeah, we do. It's just that when they call, we can tell them, Oh, um, it's not a big deal. Like, I mean, these are the classes that we have. However, please register first online, which is in their home. And this is where we might be missing them, right? Because mm -hmm. they might not have that time. And I've been at the desk so many times and I've actually stayed on the phone with that mom to hold on to the customer to make that account with them. Yeah. Because that, that's what you just said. We might yeah. be losing 20, even if it's the 20%, it's the 20% we want to hold back, right? You want to Absolutely. hold on to Absolutely. And, and, and you don't know if part of that 20%, how many of those are the kids that end up being team kids and stay with 15 years and spend $30,000 with you over yeah. a lifetime? You know, it, it, it's, it's massive lost opportunity for small process changes. Because it's not required for people to sign up before they come in. I, I would suggest that, you know, USA Ontario, sorry, USA Ontario, Gymnastics Ontario um, probably isn't requiring that everyone must sign up before they enter the gym, right? I would say that they're probably saying that everything must be signed before they actually participate in any way. That, yes, into the class. Right. Yeah. And when they come through the door, you have control. They, Agnes is on them and Agnes can sit there and help them go through it and, and hold their hand. And that's what the mum needs, right? Yeah. Because yeah. again, think about the, the mum with the three kids, the five-year-old, the three-year-old and the, and the baby on the hip, right? Yeah, I've been and, there, been there. She's going to struggle. <laughs> And, and I think it's unfair for us to say, while you don't know anything about our business, while you don't know anything about our operating system and all the stuff that we're doing, um, we want you to go away by yourself and figure it out. And then once you've done that, then you can come in and actually do business with us. No, let's actually get them into a class, invite them to come in, and then we'll hold out their hand because at minimum, the average is that that child's worth $900 to us. Yeah. Right. And it's important that your staff realizes the value of just one student. If they stay mm -hmm. for nine months or 10 months or however long they stay, that it's not just a 90, you know, $80 a month or whatever you're charging. It's that mm -hmm. lifetime value. And that each time someone doesn't sign up, that that's how much money is being lost. Not just, you know, it's not just that. And one. that's real money. That's yeah. money, money, right? That's yeah. $75 a month. Even for two months, it's 150 bucks. Yeah, I think at this moment, I think we're making such a big deal of them um, signing up instead of just taking that information. And then because once we can do that online, like, I mean, sitting in the office, when they call, I can put in their information, mm -hmm. right? I can create a new family. It's just like that, right? They can finish it off when they come in. And that is what I highly recommend that you do because we see... It's like a funnel, like you guys might have heard of sales funnels, right? Mm -hmm. So so you've got a sales funnel, you're putting as many people at the top of it and you, you, you're trying to get you know, money at the bottom of it, 
right? Each time you give friction or reasons that make things difficult is a hole in your funnel. The more times that you do it, and depending on how big a thing it is, big holes in the funnel is asking parents to sign on online and just letting them go away. The other one is sending them stuff to look at, right? Sending them a PDF of prices. Go to my website and look at what classes are available, right? That's another big hole. And what ends up happening if you don't have a tight process, you end up having a sales colander, right? <laughs> And you pour in a whole bunch of customers at the top and you get, you know, you might put a, a, a thousand potential customers at the top and you get three at the bottom because 997 have fallen out through the holes in your colander. What we want is a tight funnel. So we pour in, you know, a hundred kids at the top and 90 come out the bottom. All right. That should be our goal or at least 50% of them come out the bottom because there's always going to be attrition. You know, not everybody who inquires is always going to do business with you, but if you're doing things really, really tightly, it should be in the orders of, you know, you should be at like 50%. We've had some gyms that have a really loosey goosey approach to it and their, their conversions from interest to actual action is like 3%. So they get a hundred mums saying I'm interested in bringing my kids in and three of them sign up. And quite frankly, they should feel a bit dis despondent about that. Oftentimes they come to us and say, you know, you've helped us get a hundred people, but only three of them have signed up. What is it that you're doing wrong? And we're like, well, we got a hundred people who are interested in doing business with you. What are you doing to actually make them help them do business with you? You know, almost a hundred percent of the time, almost I'll say sometimes there's some targeting things that we can do to improve that. But even if we really target it down and really improve the marketing part of it, we might be able to improve it from say three or 5% to 10%. But that 40% that's been missing is the way they're operating. Yes. Yeah. And you'll be surprised at how one little change makes the world a difference. I'll give you one example before we finish up. We had, we had a, this is just for, for you know, our internal, I'll talk about us. Um, when we were trying to reach you guys, so with our marketing campaigns, we would have this, you know, you guys would, would inquire and you'd get an email, uh, uh, an auto text would go out and you guys would, it would be basically, hey, we'd love to set up a time to chat with you. Here's a link to our calendar, set up a time. No one set up a time. We were getting loads of gym owners inquiring about doing business with us. No one was setting up a time on that text. No one. You know what we did? We changed that automated message to from hey we'd love to chat with you about the, about working with us set up a time on our calendar here's the link to hi thanks for reaching out to us would you like to talk to us today or tomorrow mm -hmm. that's all we changed everybody started talking to us because everybody would respond tomorrow works you know today's good i'm available at four everybody responded because we weren't asking them to go away somewhere else, do something different on another platform. We were engaging with them and saying, when do you want to talk to us? And bam, all of a sudden the floodgates open. And that was us looking at our own processes. We were thinking, oh, this is a good way. The, the, the gym owner can look at it and look at the calendar, schedule it out. We can make sure we can do all this follow-up. No. What worked best was just engaging and giving them two options today or tomorrow. Even if you were to see a mess a, a, an ad from us at three in the morning on a Sunday, the automated system would say, do you want to talk today or tomorrow? <laughs> right. And people would say, well, it's uh, it's like 10, a, 10 PM on Sunday, probably not today, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> and then my sales team would call up and, and we'd talk to them. So that's, that's how it's really important to make sure that your process is good. And if there's some, and, and one little thing that's not tight and not, adhering to the rules of assumption, right? A or B and keeping it really, really close to coming to, to helping them do what they want to do, which is actually just bring their kid in. If you're trying to get them to do all sorts of other stuff, each time you do that, you lose them. Right? So they did not engage with you to, be told to go and look at your website. They did not engage with you to go to iClass Pro and fill out some stuff. They don't even know if they want to do business with you yet. They haven't even seen your gym. How dare you ask them to go and do all that work? 
get them into your gym, get them work, seeing how awesome you guys are. Most gyms look really cool when you first walk through the door. It's like, whoa, this is, there's colors, there's kids running around. This is magic. Mm-hmm. Once they're in, they're in, right? And you, and all of a sudden, your close rates go up until the 80s and 90 percentile. So that's cool. So that's about it. Barbara, do you have anything? Got a little one there? Got a little one there? Do you have anything that you want to share? No, I mean, I think the biggest thing for me is, like you said, the front desk staff. I just had someone leave that was really, um, she was older and just kind of, she actually quit, but it was good good timing. Um, And then in my rehiring, that was one of the things that I did was making sure somebody was good on the phone, good with customers. Not that the other person wasn't, but. uh, I would would always suggest that you look at your front desk and however hard this is, this is a business. If you have, like oftentimes I've seen gyms where the front desk person who's really not doing a good job and it affects the whole gym. Yep. It, it could mean you've got 40% less enrollment that you would normally have. It means that your coaches aren't getting paid how much they, they probably are deserving of being paid. It means that you've got coaches with half filled classes, which is demoralizing for co- co- coaches. I mean, Emily will tell you as a, as a gym coach, isn't it nice when you walk in and there's a full class of smiling kids rather than you turn up and there's two kids in the class because you haven't been able to fill it. Yeah, I, I don't coach that much anymore, but um, I do know that, that that was our biggest and still is our probably our biggest issue in the gym is our front staff. I know we had almost the same problem that Agnes did where it was, every every person on the phone would say yeah it's great you want to sign up but go sign up on our parent portal and one of the easiest fixes we did was just um, when we started doing the lead generation when we get their name and their phone number we'd actually start their account for them as we called them and say like we already got your account ready to go um, and then let's find out which class you guys can go in and yeah. so it didn't have all their information and when they actually came into the gym we would help get their address and all the the fluffy stuff that needs to go into their account but we would just tell them like yeah we already started your account for you and let's figure out what class is going to work for you and that started helping we really only made that change a couple months ago but it has already shown a huge increase in just getting people to even go from calling us to actually walking into our doors yeah don't think of your front desk as a throwaway position that just needs a body there think of it as how do i get the best person possible there and invest in it. Um, I'd say one of the biggest things about the gym that I was telling you had all that good success over the last couple of years, one of the things they really did was invest big time in their front desk, big time. They've always got one person there at all times from nine till whenever they close. Sometimes they've got three or four and they're all really high quality customer service, revenue generating problem solvers. They're not just somebody who's, who, who, who someone liked. Right. I, I can't tell you how many times I've spoken to a gym owner and I've said, your problem is at the front desk because I'm pretty direct when it comes to some things. And, um, but, but, but she's been with me for 15 years and I, I, I just can't do it. And I'm like, unfortunately, um, is there another role that you could give her? Because this is possibly costing you two, $300,000 a year. Do you want to, would you spend, like, if you think about it, would is there any time any of you would say, you know what, it's better to, to, to give $300,000 to somebody than to fire them because they're doing a poor job, right? You know, no. I mean, and that's what you're literally doing by keeping somebody on. You might be only paying them $15,000 a year because they're part-time, but they might be literally costing you in real money 300 grand, which is tantamount to you saying, here's $300,000 that you'll never see. So you're not even really enjoying it, but it's costing me $300,000 having you in that position. Right? That's new equipment. That's better coaches. That's careers for people. And I, if there's one thing that my mission, I'm really starting to feel this is a real mission that needs to happen for gymnastics is I want you guys to do so well from a business standpoint that we can start offering real careers in this in this industry for great people, you know, instead of it being like a part time fun hobby, right? And if the and if you're if you've got people that are your employees that are having great careers, 
that means you as business owners and managers are probably doing pretty well yourself, right? And, and we can do it by just upping our game, being a little bit more professional, having processes, and use technology and systems that actually maximize the opportunity. And working with experts, having experts on your team. And this is the self-serving part. If you don't have a marketing whiz, like I think, Peter, you're probably a bit more of the marketing whiz in your organization. But if you don't have a marketing whiz like Peter, you need to be working with a company like ours. Or you need to become that marketing whiz. All right, and you can do, you can either hire a Peter, you can hire a creatively disruptive, or you can load your brain with knowledge and become the Peter of creatively disruptive that you don't have. Otherwise, you're gonna be going back to the offering a great product and service and no great sales and marketing. And you'll never get, your gym will never get to what it could be. And you may find, and, I, and this is something I really truly believe, all of your gyms, even the well-run ones, are probably doing way less than it possibly could, right? So you're way underperforming the potential of what you have as an operation. So with that, with that thought, um, I know a lot, most of us are closed. Let's work on those virtual classes. Emily, it sounds like you guys are doing a really good job. Get some pre-recorded ones out there as well. Um, I think there's real opportunity for us as gyms to really get into the local community, do this in a really thoughtful way. Um, if you need help, you know, be in, make sure you're in the gymnastics marketing group, make sure you ask for help. If, you're, if Agnes, you're not in the gymnastics marketing group on Facebook, make sure you're part of it. And if you need help, reach out. The whole, my whole team is actually monitoring that group. So if you ask a question, you'll get an answer. Um, and if you want to work with us, just reach out to us and we'll work with you. We're, we're, we're doing all sorts of different things to help gyms right now. So even if you feel that maybe you can't afford working with us, we, there's probably a way that we can make it work. Um, but we, I, regardless of whether or not you're a paying customer of ours, or if, if not, I want you to make sure that you're upskilling your knowledge and making sure that you survive. Because we need as many gyms around as possible, right? So that's it guys, I'm gonna stop recording.